am a clown. Being that I'm a clown, I see the world differently than other people see it. And I'm willing to be ridiculed for being different. These attributes are essential for conducting innovative, cutting-edge research. My interest in clowning led me to the very academic, analytical understanding of human movement. From years of teaching creative movement, I came to my big idea, which is that music can be experienced through multiple senses. This idea is incredibly important because many people with autism have difficulty accessing music auditorily. The idea that music can be experienced through senses in addition to sound opens up the myriad benefits of music to those autistic people with a sensitivity to sound. So here's a little bit about my background. First of all, I have been a clown my entire life. In every ounce of my being, I am a clown. Clowning is not just, and it is not just, <laughs> 42 years young. <laughs> I am a clown because I'm guided by love, because I offer comic relief, and I keep going when a normal person would stop. By spending my childhood in a perpetual handstand, I gained a unique perspective. From middle school through college, I rode my unicycle to class. People would yell out things like, hey, where's your other wheel? So I got used to being made fun of. In fact, I've grown to embrace my place as an oddball on the periphery of society. Eventually, I made my way to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. There, I studied topics such as improvisation, character development, and makeup. But the really important class was creative movement. It was the only artsy-fartsy aspect of Clown College. We learned how to move from our pelvis, and that you must move back to move forward. But the really important thing about this class is, is that it led me down the path of studying movement in a very analytical way. Additionally, clown college is where I learned that two of the defining traits of a clown are the tendency to see the world differently and a willingness to be ridiculed for being different. I realized that these attributes are what have always made me a clown. People who do things differently and are willing to be ridiculed for being different are going to change the world. The problem is that although we want original, innovative research, researchers operate the same way they always have. They work within a very specific discipline, focus on a popular problem, and then prove or disprove their hypothesis. If we work the same way we have always worked, we will get the same results as we have always gotten. It takes someone special to work differently and thereby break this trend. It takes a clown. I am that clown. Now, after clown college, I took my very academic uh, understanding of movement, my appreciation for human movement, and my appreciation for working differently, and headed back to the University of Iowa. There, I studied a system for notating human movement called Laban notation. This is a really basic example. Laban notation scores start at the bottom and progress vertically. The center line on the score is like a line running down the center of the body. Symbols on either side of the line correspond to that side of the body. In the first score, we have rectangles close to the center line, so the movement remains in standing position. It starts out with both legs in low level, then it goes middle, high, low, high. For the second score, we have pointed symbols, which means that these are steps forward. It starts out with both legs in high level, then it goes high, 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 high together. For the third score, the movement starts out with both legs in low level. Then it goes middle, low, 
middle low. Now, Lobin notation can get really, really complicated. This score describes aspects of movement that few people ever consider. It includes various body parts, what's touching what, where the emphasis is, and all sorts of rhythms. Additionally, Laba notation makes us think about movement differently. Once we have the language of Laba notation, we notice aspects of movement we hadn't realized were there. The comparison of Laba notation to music notation helps us see that dance and music share some equivalencies. This means that there are things found in dance and things found in music that are the same thing, just experienced through different senses. For example, we can have this. Or we can have this. Ba, 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 ba. The notation helps us see that it's the same rhythm, just experienced through different senses. Additionally, we can have this. In this example, we have both low and high physical levels. In sound, we can have the same rhythm and we can have similarly low and high tones. For example, low, low, high, low, low, high. The correspondence is pretty obvious. Additionally, I studied Laban movement qualities. It's pretty easy to understand how movement qualities and qualities of sound could correspond to each other. When I describe movement qualities, I instinctively use sounds that correspond to my movements. For example, here are the movement qualities. Ring, ring, slash, slash, dab, dab, glide, glide, flick, punch, press. Lava notation shows us the building blocks and that each of these building blocks can be experienced through vision, sound, touch, or kinesthesis. Kinesthesis refers to the sensations a person experiences during movement, such as in the muscles, the tendons, and the ligaments. Now, my next step in life might seem a little odd. In 1998, I took my very academic and analytical understanding of movement and joined the Peace Corps. That's me on the left. My official assignment on the island of St. Lucia was, here are the country's four schools for disabled kids, teach them the arts. Keep in mind that St. Lucia is a developing country, and as such, arts education was not highly valued at the time. And people with disabilities were very much not a priority. Consequently, nobody really cared much about what I was doing. It was wonderful. They left me alone, which afforded me incredible freedom. One of my main activities was to teach movement qualities by using object exploration. For example, ring, 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 slash, 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 dab, 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 dab. Flick, flick, flick. Float, float, float. Punch, 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 punch. Press, press. The idea is that the physical properties of the objects, the kinesthesis felt by the movers, and the movement as seen by the audience all correspond to each other. For two years, my classroom was a laboratory where I explored and developed arts activities like this one. I also taught the components of movement by isolating them. For example, directions, up and down, forward, 
and back, side to side, levels, high, middle, low, body parts, fingers, hands, forearms, whole arms. With the components of movement in our toolbox, we could build movement from the bottom up. So I might say, okay, everybody in low level, low level, move however you want, low level, good, good, low level, good, moving, all right. Hands high, side to side. Punch with your knees. Punch with your knees in low level. Punch with your knees in low level, side to side. <laughs> Innovation and creativity abounded because I was comfortable on the periphery of society and I was willing to look ridiculous. In the Peace Corps, I became confident that when my students were experiencing the components of movement, they were also experiencing the components of music, just through kinesthesis. On the island of St. Lucia, I began to realize that for many people with autism, sound is not the best way to experience music. For them, for many autistic people, kinesthesis is the most appropriate sense for experiencing music. According to the Centers for Disease Control, as many as one in 68 children has autism. We all encounter people with autism. We know people related to people with autism. So this is a pretty large population. The numbers are growing and their needs must be addressed. One of the defining characteristics of autism is a tendency to be overstimulated or understimulated by sensory information. The National Autistic Society in the UK created a great commercial that demonstrates what it is like to have sensory sensitivity. Let's take a look. There is a conundrum. Some of the benefits of music include language development, increased social skills, discipline, greater self-awareness, and improved attention. Some of the obstacles faced by people with autism include language processing, challenges interacting with people, difficulty regulating emotions, and difficulty paying attention. The conundrum is that many of the benefits of music alleviate symptoms associated with autism, but due to a sensitivity to sound, many autistics cannot access music in the traditional auditory way. My work addresses this problem by conveying the content of music to autistic people's brains using mediums other than sound. So, over the years, I have developed activities for experiencing music through multiple senses. One of my activities is called painting music. For this activity, participants create patterns on a large piece of plexiglass that stands upright. The participant on one side might paint dot, 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 while the participant on the other side paints whoosh, 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 whoosh. Each participant's kinesthesis, visual patterns of movement, and two-dimensional images left on the canvas relate musically to the other participant's 
kinesthesis, visual patterns of movement, and two-dimensional images left on the canvas. The kinesthesis felt by the movers, their movements as seen by the audience, and the two-dimensional images left on the canvas are each different manifestations of the same exact music, just experienced through different senses. This work has myriad ramifications. It suggests that each of the art forms, as we know them, is the same thing, just experienced through different senses. This work supports multisensory learning, as opposed to having separate departments where sound is used over there in the music department, vision is used over there in the visual art department, and kinesthesis is used over there in the dance department. For the future, I imagine multisensory arts experiences that are reminiscent of long ago and more common in many non-Western cultures. Multisensory music enables everyone to use whichever sense is most appropriate for them to access music and its myriad benefits. These benefits include increased IQ, teamwork, fun, improved perseverance, self-expression, and reduction of stress. There are several important things I'd like you to remember. These music benefits can be accessed regardless of the sense through which music is experienced. The building blocks of music are rhythm, melody, tone, and harmony. We can take each of these building blocks, regardless of which sense they are experienced through, and combine them to form music. So here's what I'd like you to do. Explore for the sake of exploring. Because as the cat in the hat said, it is fun to have fun. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and be laughed at. In the words of Alfred Matthew Yankovic, dare to be stupid. <laughs> and there's one final thing I'd like you to do. Recognize the multi-sensory music that is within you, all around you, and that you are part of. Cheers. Thank you.